How would you define piety? Not sure. I'd probably look it up at eight, Noah Webster's 1828, but it sounds like somebody that's uh, got good conduct, probably somebody that is exemplary in their conduct, maybe. Honorable person. That, that's what I would see, just off offhand, without a dictionary definition. It sounds like that's what it would be. Who do you think determines honorable conduct? Well, that's a good, very good question, by the way. I, I believe, uh, and, and if you're asking me personally for my for my uh, understanding of that, I, I would say God would determine that, but not just any random generic God. I mean, certainly, uh, if we would deal with absolute the truth yeah the, the only the only one true god yeah because it would have to be based upon one true god because then there would be none of us could make sense out of anything because there would be contradictions in reality but so god has made our reality and so that's why we can appeal to absolute standards of truth so um oh edward by the way edward hello edward edward um what is it nadav nadav nice to meet like you nadav and Avihu. Do you remember the story of Nadav and Abihu? Yeah, yeah, I do. Amen. Um, so, do you think honor and piety and things like that are they seen as good because God sees them as good? Or are they good independent of whether God sees them? Uh, as good? That's, uh, was that Euthyphro's dilemma? Yeah. Yeah. I, I started that today, and uh, it's really, it's really tripping I would, me up. I, I would say because I'm personally, I'm a very religious person. Okay, got you. It's very, it's, it's, a, it's quite a tension, isn't it? Well, um, it, it is, it is a good question, but it sets up a. That's why it's a dilemma. It sets up some kind of a roller standard that says that it's either or. When when I'm when I'm telling you, it's it's probably both. Because in God's word, he says he's always right. He cannot lie. Uh, Hebrews uh, six eighteen says it's impossible for God to lie. Mm. Uh, Titus one two says in hope of eternal life, which God that cannot lie promised before the world began. So I believe that it is a command, but it's not an arbitrary command because God cannot lie even when He commands. So I would say uh, something's right because God says it's right, but it's it's also right because God Himself and His standards and His moral character is absolutely right because He would be the standard of goodness, the standard of morality. So if He's the starting point, what we call an ax axiom, which is would be a starting point, which you can't go, you can't prove an axiom because an axiom is self proof. Yeah, an axiom is definitely self provable. So there are axioms in this life that are just self provable that you can't prove. You just got to assume them to be true. So I. I believe that God. I'm not saying God is an axiom. He's he's well, the he's the being that makes axioms to make sense. People who I see themselves as religious or faithful people, and people who don't <laughs> confront the world in that manner, because I, I think the fundamental difference is those who are able to just take axioms as they are, and those who aren't able to do that. Because it's a great leap to be able to just <laughs> you know accept an axiom. Well, not not I don't think I don't think necessarily because um, our reasonings are based on axiom. The very reasoning we have is based on an axiom. Yeah, yeah, no, no, no but beyond the axiom, there, yeah, I think you would even agree because you just set this up that we don't have any rationale behind the axiom itself. We well, well, we'll see, but see, but see, this is where the biblical Christian worldview makes sense of axioms. God is the independent standard of all truth to even even understand it to make axioms make sense but that in and of itself is something that's beyond our our comprehension I, I, don't, I don't i don't think so because to have comprehension is to have that starting point to have comprehension to you, you, have you, yeah. is to have that starting point. Yeah, you have the starting point, which is the God of all reasoning, gives us the starting point. So if you don't appeal to God, then you are left, like you said, with uh, no axiomatic for a reason, or, or axiom, or axiom, what do you call it, some kind of a, a standard to go to, to justify our reasoning. But if we have God who justifies our reasoning, then certainly, I'm not saying God is an axiom, I'm, I'm saying that God is what makes axioms make sense. God, so God is a starting point even for an axiom. And you think that God makes axioms make sense because... He's the axiom lawgiver. God is reason? 
Is that? No, he's not. God isn't reason. He's the one that makes our reasoning uh, possible. Uh, so, so what is reasoning? Reasoning is the ability to come to logical conclusions. So if you can't justify your reasoning, can you ever come to a logical conclusion? You just said you can't. Well, I'm saying with God, you can, but not any God, because if God's just arbitrary and there's any God out there, then we don't have a reality. Then we don't know what's real because reality is based upon the correspondence theory of truth, correct? So you, you, truth is that which corresponds to reality, right? Reality is what's real. Reality is what's true, right? Would you agree with that? Reality is what's real, and reality is what's true. But I think it's it's a circle. I understand real that. Real and truth and reality and what we see in front of us. I mean, at the end of the day, I, I, truth matters. I at the end of the day, I think that it's all a lot of illusions that are sort of. But see, but even when you said that, you're appealing to a standard of truth. Because you said, what's the truth of an illusion? You don't know what an illusion is to even say that uh, truth claim. I, but you can't, you can't see, you're stuck create in this, a verdict of what an illusion is you can't not. E You can't create a verdict either. That's, you can't, that's true. You can't, even, you can't even know what a verdict is. I think living a life not being able to... None of us live that verdict, way. None of us live that way. With all your heart and soul is a pretty uh, powerful way to live. I think many argue that that would be enlightenment. You know, just what, to, equanimity, detachment from verdict, and uh, you know, hard answers about things. Well, I think that would leave you actually in a destructive worldview. Not, not knowing anything can really lead to suicide. It can lead to vanity in, in one's life. Uh, whether as God gives purpose for living, so all this, everything that we do every day in our lives have purpose. I mean, you got a drink right now. For what reason did you get a drink? I mean, and if I ask you that, you're going to give me the purpose of why you got the drink. Well, you're about to go to class. Why do you go to class? Because there's purpose. So God gives us purpose, but to, but to withdraw any reasoning behind the axiom of why we have purpose would be vanity, and that would really increase suicide and destruction for humanity. So I, I, I really believe so you, that is destructive. Vanity is a destructive thing. Definitely, that vanity is definitely a bad thing. And you also hold that there is the dichotomies of bad and good in the world that we live in. Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, somebody could do something wrong to you right now, and you would definitely get angry if they did something wrong to you that you didn't accept or agree with. Sure. And for you, the dichotomies of good and evil, and the acknowledgement that vanity is a destructive. But there's also and, ignorance. You know, we got to leave room for that. A third. So but, but it's not just those, a dichotomy. Those, but there's a third. There's ignorance. Those um, those beliefs in and of themselves. Do they give you solace and do they give you comfort in the life that you live? Well, I believe that uh, truth is what gives us true meaning in life. And without truth, it's impossible for a human being to function correctly the way God created the person. And, just and so, so, so I'm not saying you can't choose to live your life what is, what in, is in vanity. Truth is that, or uh, I would say, well, you have the correspondence theory of truth. I can define it that way. Sure. Or... I would say more perfectly in my worldview, uh, and I believe it is the perfect worldview, is that truth conforms to the mind of God. Truth conforms to the mind of God. And you and would I, defend I, that we have a capability to understand the mind of God? No, I believe that because God reveals himself to mankind in a certain certain different ways that are innate, like our reasoning, uh, conscience, uh, governments, laws and all these different things that uh, we use these things every day and so we don't we don't think the very thoughts that God thinks but we have the ability to think like God thinks in the sense that we can use reasoning we can use science we can use laws to govern ourselves so I'm not saying we have the exact righteous thoughts but certainly God gives us equips us with the machinery to use mm. that's what I mean by that and that should point us to the the lawgiver, the brain, the the brain, the creator of the brain giver. So, it sounds like what you're arguing is that we can be pointed in the direction of, of understanding divine understanding and behaving in correspondence to divine understanding. Uh, absolutely, but there has to but come a starting point. But, uh, but the starting point. The, if you don't get to the to, starting to point, get down to the nitty gritty here. You didn't acknowledge whether we can or cannot understand divine logic in and of itself. Well, you can, but there, I, I was just telling you, there has to be a starting point, though. So there, there has to be a starting point because there's a barrier right now. Um, 
Like, do you believe any human being is capable of doing that? Or? Yes, they, they are, so, and, and I, I'll tell you why. Who, so, so the barrier. So I. I I'm gonna get. I'm gonna give you an example. Around. I'm trying to I'm trying to try my best to explain it. I'm doing a miserable job on some areas of our conversation, but I'm trying my oh, best. Oh no! Don't, don't, so, don't beat yourself up. Please, so, I, I totally respect it. Okay, so what I believe in, in my worldview is that Isaiah 59 says, "The Lord's hand is not short that it cannot save; neither his ear heavy that it cannot hear." But it says, "But your iniquity," and he means all humanity. Your iniquity has separated between you and your God. So he says, "I'm the only God. What separates you from me?" is sin. So God says, I'm going to make a way that I can bridge the gap so you can understand what you're just saying, divine logic, divine understanding. So how can we do that? Well, there's this thing called uh, in the New Testament, it's called being born again, where you pass from death unto life. Mm. And once you pass from death unto life, God gives you a new nature, mm. but not a new nature in the sense that you have this miraculous thing where, oh, you know, I don't sin anymore. And I, I, I God just programmed me like a computer and I know all things. Mm. It's not like that. It's more of by believing that Jesus died for your sins and rose again the third day, mm. by believing and trusting only in that for the salvation of your soul, yeah. God says, because you believe that, now you are able to understand the words that I've given you, which includes all the deep you know, the theological things you're talking about yeah. in the Bible. So the Bible is what we believe to be the, the theology you're talking about, the higher ascension of, of logic and reasoning, which is the mind of God. I think so we believe the Holy Bible Abrahamic is... Abrahamic traditions believe that. Most sure, of the, sure, uh, sure. Muslim companions that I have hold sure. the Quran to be yeah. you know, divine logic of God. I hold the Torah as the divine logic of God. So so there, there, there's a lot of people that have that understanding. But, but listen, they all can't be right. Mm. Look, me and him can't be right. One of us is his right. Is one of us is wrong. Okay. One of us is right. One of us is wrong about eternal life. Uh, if he believes the Torah, great. I believe the Torah. Because okay. in a Christian Bible, <laughs> we have uh, uh, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. Right? So we got the law. We believe the Tanakh, the, the major and minor prophets, the Psalms. Yeah. So we believe all that. The, pro the problem that I believe that most people have when they're comparing the two is that Jesus Christ, who is a Jew from the tribe of Judah, and, and he was, yeah, he was rejected by the Jews, not all Jews, because Paul himself was a Jew, if you understand in the New Testament, Peter was a Jew, almost all the apostles were Jews, and they didn't reject him. And then there was over 500 brethren uh, in 1 Corinthians 15, they were all Jews that believed on Jesus Christ. And then 2,000, or th I'm sorry, 3,000 in the a book of Acts, when Peter preached, they got they got saved by the gospel of believing Jesus died for their sins and rose again. A really again. useful uh, distinction uh, to speak about this from a historical perspective would be the distinction between Israelites and, and Jewish people. Because at that time, they were living in... The, oh sure, the nation sure. Of Judea, understood. Which was, understood. And they were the Israelite people. They were called the, from the tribe of Judah, of course. And they had like a sacrificial right. right, and their practice was not Judaism. It was the Israelite tradition, and sure, Judaism today has emerged from that tradition, sure. and we claim them to be our ancestors. But when you really look at not not the theology, but the practice, the very 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 different in the way that the tradition is I, I, I think you're right I think you're spot on and with that Jewish people yeah. um, <laughs> I think it's it's uh, arguing that the Jewish people were the ones that uh, rejected Jesus when he uh, came into our world well I think and it was it's both inaccurate because it was the Israelites additionally if you look at the trajectory of of Judaism and the way that Judaism has grown and changed, there was a movement called the Hasidic movement. The Hasidic movement. You maybe have heard this. Word. Heard of, heard of. Yeah, I've heard of some Hasidic Jews and, that uh, are in our area, local area where we're at. Yeah, and um, Hasidut is sort of it draws on like the mystical um, streams of Judaism, and uh, sort of like the center of the um, the Hasidic tradition is sort of this divine like loving every every person that you that you interact with and um, a lot of the practice revolves around um, 
musical worship and like acts of loving kindness and things like that. Sure. And uh, I always find that really interesting because when you when you read the message of Jesus, it's very very similar to that. You know, living a life of loving kindness and treating all people with respect and dignity, whether they're you know a prostitute or a beggar or a low life or a but leper. Let, can I ask you something though about you know just I mean we're just literally talking about like religion, in the sense of living a decent life, living a a morally good ethical life, right? But the problem with that is is that what do we do about the sins that we've already committed all the bad things that we've committed in the past even though i i could take a step right now to reform my life you know not ever I speak I, I speak not as a christian i speak just as a as a lost person or somebody that's not saved just as a gentile or as a jew if i was a jew and i, and I all i did was just basically try my best to keep the laws and live a good life what do i do about all the times I don't measure up in my thought life. Come on, you would agree that we all have sinful thoughts sometimes, no matter what nationality oh, you are. The nature of humanity. It, 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 see, yeah. and, and we justify it by the nature of humanity, but God says that's not a justification because sin has to be paid for. And if you know the Old Testament very well, yeah. then you would know that that's why the sacrifices were incorporated to the Jews nationally because sin was not acceptable with God. And so every year sacrifices had to be brought because we constantly year. sin, All constantly. Oh, sure. And there were different sacrifices for different kinds of sin. Point, point, point being, point being, we sin constantly. That's the point. So, so here, this, this is the huge problem. So, could could animal sacrifices take away sins? Well, maybe, like 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 eternally. Maybe in the ancient days there was uh, the belief that that's how. But the Bible never. Was, but the uh, Bible never in the Old Testament and the Torah never says that it it literally takes away all sin eternally. But it does cover you. It does cover sin. That's what it does. And the Bible specifically says cover sin, but it never says take away to make you guiltless. So the Lamb of God, which is Jesus Christ, would come one day. Now, he's not just the Son of God. He's fully God. And we believe that as Christians because of the New Testament. Well, there are, where he there are spe different uh, perspectives on that across the Christian tradition. Well, there may be, but there's only one right one because we just said it because God doesn't contradict. So I disagree with all the ones that have a different take on it. So my but that's your Christian tradition that you're speaking about. Well, that's my, well, again, we don't deal with subjectivity. We deal with uh, objectivity in the Bible. So I, I believe that if you read the Bible in context, that you can objectively get the truth of who Jesus actually is. And Isaiah 9, 6 is in the Old Testament that says, uh, for unto us a child is born, for unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God. That's why we believe Jesus is God. And if you go to the New Testament, now Isaiah written up 700 years before Jesus came to this earth, first advent, um, when Jesus came to this earth, his very birth fulfilled over 300 messianic prophecies mm. in the Old Testament. Zechariah, Malachi, uh, uh, Isaiah um, fulfilled all those. Ezekiel, all. This is, uh, this is all very nice. But, but, I have but, a question but, to ask you, and I really, I hope you don't take this the wrong way. No, I'm asking ahead. like purely out of curiosity. Uh, what sort of things do you do in your daily life to sort of emulate the message of, of Jesus? Well, one of the main ones that I'm doing right now is standing out here talking to people like you, and which is huge benefit to be able to reach somebody the best I can. I can't save anybody out here, but I know if they trust in Christ, Christ can save them. And so, but we relay as the church, we just relay like a mailman delivers the mail to your to your door. I, the mailman can't make anybody open up their bills. Um, but he can but give he can you your bills, but he can also, he can deliver you a bill. He can also deliver you somebody that paid for your bill. What? And, well, and, and, and that's what I'm doing. I'm, I'm delivering the bill what? and the bill is the wages of sin is death. We all sin and we, those sins yeah. got to be paid for. But I'm also delivering you the mail that Jesus paid that bill for you. Yes. He wants to give you eternal life and forgiveness Absolutely. of sins. Absolutely. But I, which is beautiful and really, Amen. really, really lovely um, and beautiful. 
But I mean like other things, like, you know, like picking up groceries for someone or something like that. I'll help whatever I can help if I, if opportunity. The Bible says, he that knoweth to do good and doeth it not, to him it is sin. Do you, like, so I'm going to do my best have to... Have any, like, you know, social action, like groups that you're involved with, like a well, shelter or something uh, like Okay, so I preach at the mission, oh, that's uh, lovely. Uh, the Orlando Rescue Mission here. Okay. Um, it's it's the similar. it's the or, it's called the Orlando the Union Rescue here. Mission. I do here in Orlando, yeah, yeah, yeah. and I drive from Deland. I mean, like what you're doing right now, like that seems very similar to that. I'm, I'm curious if you do. Well, it's like the most. Other, well, the, the reason why is things. the reason why it's the most important thing. The reason why I say that is because if I say I worked at a soup kitchen, yeah, and and you might say, oh, what a great thing, but sure. if I worked at a soup kitchen and all I ever did was give them soup, mm. and they never heard Jesus, what good is living a, a finite life and end up in ending up in hell well, isn't when that a better when way of opening the door to no if you use it as a means yes yeah. yes if you use it as a means i totally agree with that yeah. uh but you know I, I always believe that any nice thing you do for somebody carnally you know in the flesh like if i see a person fall down right here in front of me and i help them up yeah the goal i mean i need i want to help them up it's a more ethical thing to help them up but it's also moral and ethical for me to help them up and eventually give them the gospel message. Mm. Um, that way they can be saved from their sins, not just be saved, you know, me helping them up or giving them a couple of bucks to get a meal, but to give them the true meal of eternal life, the Lord Jesus Christ, who's the bread of life. Um, right. Definitely want to do both. So, no, you're absolutely right with that. You know, I want to, to help wherever I can. You know, if I see somebody stuck out, you know, I, I'll do my best. But sometimes I don't have money to give. I don't. I'm not a guy with a lot of money, and I can't give. I work hard for whatever I do have, and I'm trying to support my family. But if I have it, I'll give what I have. But even if I give what I have, there's always a motive, and the motive is the greater good, which is giving them the gospel that Christ died for you because He loves you, and I'm, I'm helping you. Yes, I, it's morally right to help you, but it's even more morally right to help you and tell you the good news of Jesus Christ. The gospel. Right. 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 Well. This has been a lovely conversation. I hope you have a great it was, day. It was nice meeting you, and there's a, a very good reasoning and good questions too. Appreciate you stopping by and talking. Anytime. And uh, yeah, if you if you uh, could, I give you maybe the good news of God's amazing love. Um, um it, it, and if you I, have any uh, questions, you can just email me there. Personally, I, I, I like heavier reading than the card. Okay. And I'm already doing the heavy reading, my friend. Do you, have, do you have a do you have a Bible at home? Of course I do. Amen. Of course I do. Well, b better. I also you... have a Quran. And okay. I also have the Bhagavad Gita, and be I also have every other text from every other tradition. Okay. Because but... there is no right and wrong. Okay. Better yet, what about a uh, King James? You have. Have a good day.